Hey there, welcome to Cocktails and Cliteture, the podcast that's all about bringing the heat. It's time to talk about the smuttiest and spiciest books in town. And trust me, we're not holding back anything. I'm your host, Constance, and together we're diving head first into a world of litlicious pleasure where we celebrate the power of our inner goddesses and embrace the magic of our curves. Get ready to slay those pages, ladies, because this ain't your grandma's book club, okay? We're breaking down barriers, smashing stereotypes, and owning our sensuality like nobody's business. It's all about empowerment, upliftment, and unapologetic self-love. We've got the inside scoop you don't want to miss. This is Girl Talk at its finest. So gather your bestie, tune in, and let's go on a wild, sassy, and unapologetic ride together. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the naughtiest spot on the airwaves. We're here to celebrate the bad, bad girls this holiday season. And guess what? We've got a treat for you today. The New York Times bestselling queen of spicy small town romance. Tessa Bailey is here. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Oh, we're so excited to have you here. We're ready to talk about all your blue collar studs and your irresistible (laughs) heroines. And, you know, you're going to leave us merry and swooning like you always do. So we're super excited about that. Yes, I brought the spoon. I'm ready to deliver. Excellent. We're ready to hear about it. We're so happy to have you join us. We're brand new on this podcast, six months in, and we got one of our favorite authors. By the way, your podcast episode is our number one listen to episode. Really? So that number one. What were you talking about? It happened one summer. That's the one that was, that's number one. Oh, uh-huh. that's so cool. Um, yeah. You probably turned on a, li- a lot of people to the captain, like sent them over to Westport to experience it for themselves. So mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm thrilled to hear that. <laughs> He's over there catching them crabs and all that good stuff. Yeah, people did not know they were going to be into fishermen. So <laughs> I liked all the little dirty talk he was given. So I was there for it. Amber yes. was too. We went in. We're here to talk about wrecking the halls this holiday season. So can you tell us a little bit more about that story? Yeah, Wreck the Halls is, okay, so pretend we have this, like, mega famous um, female power pop duo in the 90s, and, like, they're the biggest band in the world, and then they have this horrible breakup that just sort of, like, devastates everybody, Um, and we don't really know the reason behind the breakup, so it's 30 years later, and their children, which is, like, the lead singer's son and the lyricist's daughter, have been offered a million dollars each to reunite the band on Christmas Eve. And the whole thing is going to be live streamed. So it's it's kind of like this, it's kind of like this madcap race to like reunite this band by Christmas Eve, but it's also the story about soulmates to lovers because our, our characters, Beat and Melody, they do meet briefly when they're teenagers. And like, it was just like the very, a very effective moment that they just like, carried with them for a really long time um and so they just thought of each other every day since and so when they reunite as adults it's like magic because i i think christmas books need a little bit of magic they absolutely do it's all about you know getting into the holiday season and the setting that you create is just so amazing it makes you feel like you're there you know the lights and the trees and decorating for the event it was just a lot of like soon worthy moments and so i liked uh feeling like i was there in the moment Thank okay you. so melody and beat they like totally stole my heart and i feel like they you know it was just a perfect pairing so i want get into the juice with you, Tessa, and dive in a little bit into your spicy themes of the book. Are you ready? I'm ready. (laughs) All right. (laughs) First of all, I got to say, the first book I read from you was The Fixer Upper. And that cover made me think like, oh, this is going to be a fun and flirty little, you know, innocent kind of little rom-com. And then I was blown away by the spice in that book. So I want to know, when did you first realize that Dirty Talk was the secret sauce to what everyone craves in these romance novels? And also, Breaking the Halls, what is the spice scale on that? It's like, okay, full, to answer that last question first, I think like everybody has a different spice scale, you know? 
like some people will rate my, I mean, I get tagged in reviews all day on Instagram and it's like, some people will rate my books to like two chili peppers. And then other people will be like, it's five chili peppers. And so I think everybody just like relative to a, like what they read and also their criteria, like a lot of people say, oh, it has to be like, you know, like an orgy to be five, you know, five chili peppers. <laughs> and then I don't know, other times, even if it's just like two people, just depending on like the acts they get up to together, like that might be be part of your rating system. But I don't, the, the truth is for me, I feel like I'm a 3.5 out of, like a three to 3.5 out of five. Okay. That's what I think. I, I like, you know, I do build in kind of a slowish burn where they're definitely connecting a lot before they hug up and there's a lot of like, you know, build up of tension and things like that. So I think just in terms of like how many spicy scenes there are, I would give myself a three out of five. Um, but yeah, I, the dirty talk is like something that like always has just been my favorite part of a romance novel. From the time I was a, like a, a teenager, I would go into the romance section, I would pick up a romance novel and I would flip to the scenes, the sex scenes, and I would read the dialogue. And if that appealed to me, then I would buy the book. And it's just <laughs> something like... I don't know. It's my favorite part of the romance novel. It's like the characters have their walls down. They're being vulnerable with each other. There's like a real honesty and like kind of raw sexual, like animal magnetism energy going on to it. Mm -hmm. That's just my favorite part. I, I, it's like things have to change for the characters after those scenes because they've said something they can't take back or they've like revealed that they feel deeply for each other you know, verbally. And I, that's just my addiction. I have to have it. That is so interesting. If I was to pick, pick up a brand new book and I love the spice, I love all of it. Right. But I feel like if I picked it up and I opened it and there, and like I read the spicy scene, I'm like, I don't know if I would go back and like want to read it because I feel like I've already got the, like the good <laughs> first. So, you know, that's, I've never heard that before, but that's really cool. The spice, you're all about that spice. Yeah, I am. And it's so funny that you said that about Fixer Up uh, because it like, that was sort of my first novel that came out after everybody started doing the illustrated covers. Like mine was one of the first, I would first, first wave of those illustrated covers. So a lot of people were taken off guard and like not happy about it. <laughs> and I never, I never hear it anymore. I never hear people being shocked anymore. So that's nice. Yeah, I think um, I think you might have started the wave because after that, I started seeing them everywhere. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so, okay. Now, Wreck the Halls has, like, badass women from a rock band, and everyone wants to see them reunited, which I loved. Uh, what inspired you to center the story around the strong ladies, and did you channel any of your, like, inner rock star vibes into it? <laughs> I mean, I've always had like a real fascination with um, band breakups. I mean, my husband is like really into, not only is he really into classic rock music, but he knows the story behind every band. He like knows the story behind every album, how it was made, where the name came from, how like he really just knows his rock trivia. And so he talks to me about, about like ABBA and Fleetwood Mac and those band breakups. And so to me, that's like very romantic that these like people could create this incredible art together. And then just like, that was it. It was just a moment in time, you know, mm -hmm. like, and that's all ever will be. And it was just magic of the way they were, the, who they were in that moment. And then that's it. They're, they've changed and they moved on. And that's just incredible to me. Um, and I didn't expect to really fall as hard for the moms in this book as I did, but I loved them so much that I was like dedicated to making that reunion like worth like the buildup, you know, I was, I wanted to make it exciting. I wanted to make it like um, satisfying. It absolutely was. And it was so interesting because they really were like polar opposite after the breakup. And you see like how each one of them was living in be in that 30 year span, like one ran away and then one went into the glamour and the glitz. And it was just really weird seeing that. I pictured the them as, um, I pictured, um, them as Posh Spice and Courtney Love. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I pictured them in my head. So 
I can like, see I that. Can't imagine those two in a room together. So it was just kind of funny to think about. It was. I love that. One of the things about them, about the band, is that you know there was this like juicy decades old um, scandal that caused the breakup, and everyone was you know not sure what happened, and it really did make it more of like a enemy families trope in my in my mind that's what I was thinking when I was reading it how did you come up with that twist and because that really made it a page turner I really wanted to see what happened like when they got back together when they were reunited how you were able to make that work within the whole book yeah I it's weird like I knew that there was a terrible breakup and I didn't necessarily know what had caused it until I started writing and I met B I met B and I met Melody and then I kind of like backed into it in a way. I like, I like let myself, um, let the story unfold for myself at the same time, which I do, I do that frequently because sometimes I don't know what's going to impact the characters the most until I've had a chance to like really sit with them for a while and like understand their motivations and like dig into their past a little bit and their psyche a little bit. So I knew he wanted, I knew I wanted B to be blackmailed. Um, and so like that, the story kind of like, it took its own twists and turns for me as well. And I just went along for the ride. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun to write. I mean, I feel like you don't get a lot of blackmail in Christmas books, you know, I mean, we need more blackmail in Christmas, we need more holiday blackmail, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I was like, I don't think I've ever read about someone being blackmailed. So it was a first for me. I don't want to, I don't want to give any spoilers. So I'm not going to go into the details, but yes, I did really like that. And it it made me, you know, feel like I was reading something different. And I always think that's exciting. Um, so because you are able to blend so many things together, you know, you're known for spice, swoon, and spirit in your books. What is like the recipe? Because you know a Tessa Bailey book, you're going to get that. Um, yeah, it's like, it's kind of instinctive, I guess. I, I think... Um it's knowing when I need to pull back on the angst a little bit and have a lighthearted moment. And, or like, you know, um, if I need to like turn the, the steam valve and let like, let a little steam loose on the sexual tension. Like, I think like it's something that has started to come to me instinctively where I'm just like, okay, there's been like three scenes in a row where like I've been building the drama of like the subplot and not the romantic plot. And I really just need to like let these characters break away and connect for a while so that when I come back to that dramatic plot, the that the stakes are higher, you know, because we've seen them together. We've seen how important they are to each other. And like, what if this doesn't work out? And, um, and I also just like, especially in writing rom-coms, um, you, you just need to have the humor there at all times, I think, to sort of like keep it from getting heavy because mm -hmm. In these rom-coms, like, we're definitely dealing with heavier topics now than we, you know, like, in typical rom-coms of, like, days yes. days gone by. Like, we're, we're dealing with the heaviest topics. Yes. Um, but I think what's so cool about, like, what, what romance authors are doing or rom-com authors are doing is, like, we're just, like, it's, like, laughter is the best medicine. Like, we do have to laugh about these things. And um, it's how we deal with it's how we deal with pain and how we deal with um, trauma sometimes. Um, and so I think a lot of people being able to read about these heavy topics with a lighthearted feeling to go with it, and maybe it's therapeutic in some, in some cases. Um, so it feels like a real privilege to be able to write it. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I think when you read about the heavier topics, because I have noticed that as well, you know, people are talking about divorce now, they're talking about being a single parent, they're talking about, you know, mental illness that they might have, or, or things like that, or financial problems, all yeah. those things are starting to come up in the in the rom coms. And I think it's so amazing, we're able to balance the the humor with the darkness, like Melody, she was so funny. <laughs> and so disarming and like it came out of nowhere and I could totally understand like why you would want to watch her um and during the the streaming that they did because like it was just so lighthearted even though you know beat on the other hand he was being blackmailed and that was so dark but then you have her over here restoring her books just happy and chatting and like just she won everyone over and I just thought that was really cool how you were able to do that in that book and yeah I think when you incorporate a lot of the the real life 
um, things that we experience, it just, it's so relatable and it resonates with all of us. And I think having the balance and the spice and the swoon all in a package is like the best thing. Yeah. And so like, that's a really good example of what I, when I, when I say it's like, I, I try to just write instinctively is like Melody originally when I plotted the book out was supposed to be very shy and quiet and like very reserved. But then once, once I started writing beat and he has a little bit of darkness to him, like I just automatically just started balancing him out with like Melody's sort of like self-deprecating humor and like her sort of like one-liners uh -huh. I needed to balance him out. And I, I didn't even think about it. It's just something that happened naturally. Um, and yeah, she really ended up being <laughs> just like a real pleasure to write. She's fun. I did like her, all her one-liners. I was like, oh my God, that is so <laughs> random, but it's really funny. So when you're, when you're writing your characters, are they like secretly your BFFs? Like, or do they, you know, are they based on people that you know, or is it just like they come out of nowhere and they're like, write my story? Yeah, they definitely just come out of nowhere. I mean, I every once in a while, a character trait from like one of my friends or someone I've met in the past will make its way in, you know, but or like something about myself where I, you know, like maybe I feel like it's something I need to deal with and I'm not really, I'll just like, I'll finish writing the book and then I'll be like, oh, I see what I did there. That's me. Like, that's me, you know, like working through something that I was thinking about in the back of my head this whole time. Mm. Um, but it, it's... Uh, it's really largely fantasy, you know, like, I don't think these men really exist, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, they, they, they might, but they're very few and far between. <laughs> um, and that's, the, that's, that's the job. I mean, we're writing not what, what's react, what men really are, or like, we're writing what we would like to have in a relationship. We would, what we would like to get from men, um, and what, we, how we would like them to think about us and how we like, just the fact that they would think about us at all or like that mm -hmm. they would know what we're thinking or that they, you know, ask us what we're feeling. Like that's yes. the fantasy. I mean, it's not necessarily all about the the sex though. That is a huge part of it. It's like consideration. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, you know, like that's, <laughs> so I, I do write fantasy in a sense, you know, <laughs> like it's um, unfortunately, but yeah, I think it's just uh, some people like even just prefer to read about relationships than being one. I've noticed that like mm. more among my readers, you know, they would rather wow. uh, read about sex than have sex. And uh, I think that's something I'm seeing more and more. And I don't think that there's anything wrong about, like wrong about that. It's like, cool, refreshing. <laughs> you know, I always say that sometimes I want to have sex, but I don't want to have sex. So yeah. I will read the book and it'll give me like the fix that I'm thinking about, but then I can just go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> there is no, there is no work, no effort on my part. It's not because it really is like 90% mental. I feel like sometimes, you know, yeah, yeah. in when you're getting physical in real life or whether you're reading about it in a book, like it's really mental, a mental workout. And uh, yeah, it's such a pleasure not to have to do anything, not to have to clean up a mess afterwards or like take off your clothes or anything like that. It's like, it's just, um, and also you just get like, I feel like we genuinely get like a thrill, like reading about someone like us finding pleasure or having a triumph or succeeding or like, you know, like having a mm -hmm. victory, like mm -hmm. we really get pleasure out of seeing other women succeed. And it's the experience, it's the journey, right? Because we're able to, to go through the whole, like the meet cute and the falling in love and then the makeup sex and yeah. all, all of the, like the ups and downs of a relationship, things that make it exciting, things that make you excited in a lot of other areas. You know, it's, it's that mental picture We're we're going along for this ride that, you know, we might be in relationships that we've been in for a long time. And it's nice to like, escape into a world where you yeah. get to experience that all over again yeah it's like yeah you're falling in love for the first time exactly you're you're getting all of the the fresh blush of excitement and like you know like what's it going to be like what's he going to be like and the excitement of even what happens now you know like <laughs> when you're married yeah. or you have a significant other or whatever it is like you you, are, you know what's going to happen the next day because it happens every single day <laughs> So it's nice to have like a little like, ooh, like a little mystery, like a little, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. Right. And you learn things too. At least I've learned things from different books. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I might try this to like spice it up or do something different because like I've been married for 10 years. I don't know about you or your partnership, but uh, 16. Like, you know, years. 16. Yeah, I got married when I was 23. Um, wow, young. Yeah, and I'm 39. So he, okay. he, he had been dating my husband since I was 19. Wow. So you're like sweethearts. Like, did you mean high school or anything like that? No, you he's, he's, that? he's 14 years older than me. I'm in an age gap romance. So, <laughs> okay, Miss Tessa, I'll see yeah. you over there. I know. Um, yeah, we have a 12 year old, um, and we're like, I'm, I like, I'm stupid in love with him. I love him. He's wonderful. Um, missed him. He was gone. He was just in Ireland. He's from Ireland. He's from Dublin. Um, so yeah, what are, what are my tropes? I guess age gap, um, like foreign hero. <laughs> mm, okay. Before, oh, yeah. foreign hero. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would be seven, I think 17 years, um, in March or something. <laughs> well, congratulations. Yeah, that's a, that's, years, a though, that's great too. That's like a huge milestone. Yeah, thank you. I, I was just like, I can't believe I've been with my husband for a decade. Like, you know what I mean? It's crazy. You want to think he about it. You're reading romance novels. Is he supportive? Does he love it? He's supportive because if it makes me wet, he's like, I'm ready <laughs> to like get in there. So read <laughs> as much as you can. <laughs> yeah. I'm reading. And he's like, what are they doing in that book? Like, you know, how are you feeling down there? Like, are you, do you, I'm like, okay, wait, I'm reading. If I need you, I will let you know. Okay. But yeah, no, he's all good with it. Um, he likes it, but right now I have this like fascination with the whole why choose situation. And he's like, is that really what you want? Hell no. <laughs> no in real life, that's just too much too much everywhere like happening i will I read it would just be going on forever like oh my I, gosh would just, i'd be like can we wrap this up it's been like two hours like ah, uh, i don't know i just um <laughs> that's actually why so i wrote a white shoes called happenstance it started off as a joke that i like it started off as a joke on tiktok how i was talking about how actually or like uh white shoes in real life would be awful because your house would smell all the time there would be like socks everywhere on the floor there'd be like streaks of things in places mm -hmm. like you know mm -hmm. no uh, it's too many men in one place <laughs> yeah that and then also like I feel like most men and I may not that might may not be right but they tend to have sometimes a higher you know sex drive than than we do and I'm yeah. one of the ones that mine does have a higher sex drive than I do. So five of him or three of him or even two of him, when would I get a break? Never, no, never. never. <laughs> yeah. You just have to give up your job. You'd have to give up. Like we're going we're gonna to get takeout every night. <laughs> you never, you never rest. Never. So that, no, yeah, you might as well use your Netflix subscription because you're not watching Netflix. <laughs> You don't have time for anything. You barely have time to shower. That yeah. is, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Even then. Even then, one of them would be in there with you, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. And that's oh, like, God. That's Jeremy, get out of the shower. <laughs> Give me a moment. Okay. So um, we want to get a little bit more into who is Tessa. I want to, like, get to know you just a little bit better. So how did you become a best-selling author like where where did your journey start well so I had a, I had my daughter um that's kind of where it started I I've always wanted to try writing a romance novel um but then like after a year of being home with a the baby then my husband's bar got flooded during Hurricane Sandy and so he was out of work for, for like six weeks and I was like can I write a book like can I try to write a book you know, um, cause I've just been sitting in this apartment for a year, like watching this baby and like, I need to do something like I'm, I don't have a creative outlet. I don't have friends. <laughs> like, mm. you know, like I, yep. almost, none of my friends had babies. Um, and so like, I, he, yeah, he was like, do it. So I locked myself in a room. I wrote this book in like three weeks. Like I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I think that was just literally a burst of everything that had been building up inside of me of just needing to like express something. 
yeah. uh, something artistic. And so I, I sent it in on to a uh, publisher's and I heard back from one called Entangled, um, which was at the time digital only. So it was just going to be out in ebook. And she was like, you have like, you have like a talent here. You know that like you have, it's pretty good. And she was like, we need to work on this though. Like you definitely are raw talent. We, you don't know what you're doing. I like, I didn't know what tropes were. I didn't know what <laughs> count was. I didn't know what yeah. genre was. I was just like, I wrote a story. That's what I did. So she, the editor that got back to me, sort of like helped me shape it. And like, she taught me the industry and, you know, like pointed me in the right direction. And then I was just like off to the races. Like I haven't stopped writing since, but two years ago when it happened one summer, like really took off and went viral on TikTok and like brought a whole, that brought a whole different level to a career that I was totally content with. You know, I was like, I wasn't hitting New York times, but I was fine with that. I wasn't like, you know, yeah. But now it's like, I feel like a completely different, it's a completely different career. And I think if having gone through 10 years without any of the fanfare, now that I have it, I'm like, I really appreciate it a lot. <laughs> because I know, I know what it's like to not have anybody come to your book signings or mm. anybody. So like, I, I'm just like, kind of on cloud nine about the whole thing, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I mean, what a wonderful way to like grow in the career. Like, you know, it's a lot of blood, sweat and tears when you're starting something new. You know, we all go through the imposter syndrome. Like, are people really going to like this? Are they really going to be invested? And so I can only imagine like even starting this podcast, right? We're like, is anyone going to listen? Like, you know, are we going to have even 30 people, you know, are we going to come in their homes and be in their ears? And, you know, it's steadily growing, but it takes some time and it takes a lot of hard work and, and tears and, you know, all of that. Yes, so yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It does. I mean, I, it could be said for a lot of careers, you know, it could be said for just anything. I mean, yeah. geez, like friendship, motherhood, like, <laughs> I mean, any kind of, of relationship you're in or any job you're in, like getting up and grinding every day. Mm -hmm. And even for when the results are not what you want them to be, keeping at it, keeping at it, keeping at it. Um, yeah. So yeah, like here we are. And I'm just like, you know, it's just crazy to me. Um, that I'm on a podcast or that like I go into like Barnes and Noble and people like know like they're like that's how and I'm like wow wow that's crazy I mean I never that would never happen to me for the first 10 years I was doing this so I mean well Tessa you are a legit celebrity <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I think I a lot of it is that I, I, I really I'm okay with being a dumbass on TikTok uh and so I think a lot of people you know Maybe you've seen me on there, but it makes you real, you know, like people can relate to that. And I, I, I figure I feel that all of the authors that I love to read and, um, I get to talk to, it's just like, I'm talking to like a celebrity that, you know, it's not on TV because I love movies and all that, but I'm a number one book person. And so like, you're my celebrity. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> She finally heard our plea. We were like putting out our episodes. We're like, Please come on the show. Oh my gosh. And I, I hope you don't think like, so my, my problem, I have a serious problem in that I think like most authors um, have a, like a help, like assistance or like personal assistance, but I am such a problem with like delegation and I have such a problem, like letting go of control that like, I don't have anybody like that. So everything just gets, you know. Like I saw your messages and I'd be like, I'm going to answer that later. And then like four, four months passed and I was like, oh shoot. Oh God. You know, so. Um, You're yeah. here now. Really That's, all that yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters. And you know, we're six months in, so we got a little bit more experience now. So it's a good time. <laughs> it is. And you can tell you're really good at this. Oh, thank you. I'm trying, you know, learning as I go. <laughs> you're good. You're good. No, no dead air at all. You're like in there. <laughs> Yay. Um, but no, that is amazing. And I'm so happy for you with all the success that you're having. You deserve it. Your books are just out of the world, out of this world, anything that you come out with. Plus, I want to make sure you let people know because you have like so many books that are like coming out back to back. I was like, I can't even keep up with Tessa. How much time does it take you to write one novel? So it's like, 
I tell people like new writers, like it's a muscle that you have to like, you have to work it out. You have to work it out. Like when, when I first started writing, I could write like 500 words in a day and that would be like really hard. Um, and that's like a page and a half. And now I can write 3000 words and that's what I do five days a week. I write 3000 words. And when, when you're doing that, I mean, you can write a 80 to a hundred thousand word book in two to two and a half months. And then when you bring in all the, the revisions and the copy edits and all, it really, it's like three to three and a half months um, per book. Wow. And I'm so far ahead of myself because I am traditionally published. Like that when I, I write a book and turn it in, it's not coming out for a year. So like I can really, oh. I don't take time off because I'm crazy. So I like I'm constantly just starting another book as soon as I turn the other one in. So I am way ahead of myself. They have like, yeah, they have two or three books for me that haven't been published yet. And they're just waiting to to publish them. Oh, you got them in the chamber ready to go. Yeah, it's nice. Oh. Like I am in a place now where I only have to release two books a year. Whereas before I would be re- releasing four to five. Um, and so that's like really nice. Like I can really dedicate more just like sitting and staring at the wall and thinking <laughs> like, what if I do this instead? Or like, like I can really sit and think and get like acquainted with my characters and take the plot in different directions and see where it goes. And I have all that time. It's like a luxury that I didn't have before. So, um, enjoy. Yeah. 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 That's like, well, you have time to get a vacation then, you know, a week at least. <laughs> yeah, I will. I, I will. I, I'm, I'm going this summer, hopefully. <laughs> somewhere. Okay, Okay. So I'm actually I'm turning 40 in February and I am going to I'm going to Aruba. So that's exciting. That is exciting. I turned 40 during COVID. Oh. And so that was such a bummer. So I'm glad you have the opportunity to like go full blown and just enjoy yourself. So I'll live vicariously through you for that. Well, you'll have to like make up for it at 50 or something. Like you'll have to really blow it out. Yes. Yes. I was going to do an 80s theme party. And I think I was, I was leaning towards Janet Jackson, you know, control. Comes your favorite Janet, Kim, come as your favorite Janet. Like, yes. Well, yes. Yes. That <laughs> is. Love that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 50. Here I come. <laughs> Start planning it now. Exactly. Okay. So um, because romance is your playground, what made you choose this genre? I don't, like, I don't care about anything else, <laughs> you know? Uh-huh, I just, uh-huh. ever since I was a kid, like, if if there was something on television and there wasn't a romantic subplot, I was out. I did not, did not hold my attention. I'm just, like, it's the thing that makes me happy. It's the thing that makes me feel hopeful. I just want to write romance. And, like, I, I can, I, bear, I struggle through writing chapters where the character is, the love interests aren't on the page together. Like, I don't even know how I would write a whole book of like no romance happening. No, like somebody needs to be getting banged. So uh, <laughs> it's always going to be romance for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Every now and then I'll, I'll slip in a, a thriller or something for a, you know, pa- a palate cleanser here and there, but overall it's just romance all day, every day. Like yeah. I think I'll be in my romance era forever. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I sometimes I'll pick up Frederick Bachman. I feel like he is such a great char- uh, author for crafting characters. I mean, he's a great author for everything, but I specifically read him because I, there's something about the way he crafts characters that's so mm-hmm. like enviable. I don't know how he does it. So usually I'll pick up him more like a thriller. Yeah. I'll check him out. I don't think I've read anything by him. Speaking of other authors, you have any favorites that you like to read? Yeah, I mean, like right now I have, um, I love, so I love Mariana Zapata. I love Tia Williams. I have this arc of Tia Williams next book. She wrote Seven Days in June. Um, oh. She's a struggle author. I love Kate Claiborne. Okay. Definitely one of my top ones. Um, who else do I love so much? Like, uh, you know how you blank out when you're trying to think of who you like? <laughs> Uh, Sarah nice. Adams is one of my new favorites. And I love BK Borison and Sarah Adams are both really mm-hmm. cool. mm-hmm. to the scene. And like, they're really just right. Feel good. Just like soft cloud books, you know, like wonderful. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I have, yeah, I like, I love so many different authors, but um, 
And now I'm going to finally have a chance to read more now that I've like kind of gotten ahead of myself. Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. I think Sarah Adams might be coming on the show next year. So that's exciting. Yeah. Who would yeah. you recommend to me? Who's your, like, who's an author you would recommend to me to like try out? Ooh, see, now you're putting me on the spot. Tessa. <laughs> Um, well, you can I mean, have it till the end of the show if you want. <laughs> I feel like I'm like we are so into like fantasy romance here. Um, so like it's either small town spicy romance or fantasy. <laughs> like it's hard to find a middle ground. That's such a range. <laughs> no, right? So every now and then we'll like pl- like uh, pucking around or like you know Sarah uh, Sarah Kate praise. Like we did a whole series on that. <laughs> Yeah, do you like her? Oh, I love her. I love Elsie Silver. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so many good indie authors that are like killing the game right now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I just want to read them all. Uh, yes. They're so are you cool. a Jennifer um, Armentrout fan? I've been a Jennifer Armentrout fan since before I was an author. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like so I, I, mean- so I, I, I read the, um, what is it the Lux series? Mm, I can't yeah. say I've read all of her books. But I do love her. I don't think I read that one, that series. Oh, my God. Okay, so, wait, is it the Lux or the Obsidian series? No, it's going to bother me. But um, it's Damon <laughs> Black. Damon Black is the hero. And it's like, a, I feel like it's like a five or six book series. And um, I read those before I was ever an author. And then I met her at a convention. Mm-hmm. And she, like, asked me to come outside for a cigarette. And I pretended to smoke. <laughs> so I could hang out with her. You did it. She's really cool, uh, like, <laughs> willing to talk to anybody, like, very down to earth. Like, she was, like, a great meet your hero moment. So I was, but I was yeah. like, I'm smoking with Jennifer Armentrout. And oh, my gosh. And we're going to this tomorrow, but it's great for now. Oh, yeah. Wow. I love Sierra Simone as well. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh. Uh, Kennedy Ryan. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Her, her book, uh, Before I Let Go, is probably one of my favorites of this year. I can't remember if it yes. was last year or this year, but uh, yes. I definitely read it about a year ago. And I got to do it um, where I interviewed her about it. And so I was like, well, I, like, I don't even know. I felt like it was just such a like huge book. Like I, mm-hmm. felt, so, I felt like inadequate uh, interviewing her. Oh. And I was like, what the hell? Like it is so... <laughs> This was so rough to read. And at the same time, yeah. I felt like renewed at the end of it. Yeah. Because yeah. So yeah. good. Yeah. Gritty, but like emotional roller coaster. You get all the feels, you cry, you laugh, you, you know, you're in the, the thick of it. I, yeah. I just love it. I feel it. like her, like the friend groups that she creates are like, wow. It, it's like they have, they have so much ambition and so much drive. That's like such a, it's just like you make, they make you want to be a better person for books mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's she's like really honestly a goddess. Yeah. Okay, so back to you though, Tessa. Out of all the romance novels that you've written, uh, what are your top five favorite couples? So I have a book coming out in February called Fangirl Down. And uh that's probably one of my top favorite couples, I'd say. Uh it's Wells and Josephine. Then I have, it's really difficult for me to decide between Brendan and Piper and Fox and Hannah. So I'm just going to say both of those couples. Okay. Uh, I have a book like way from way back towards the beginning, uh, uh, Hayden and Brent. They're in a book called Asking for Trouble. And it's like rich uptown girl meets like downtown collar, like blue collar guy, which is like Uh my favorite thing to write. And so they're probably one of my top and then there's a book called risking it all oh you know what Mm -hmm. shoot is that it's either risking it all which is bowen and sarah or Mm -hmm. girl with uh addison and elijah so okay i have a lot i have a lot of favorites and it'll probably all change tomorrow but (laughs) them all equally books have you written thus far i think like over almost 60 jeez woman (laughs) now I know why you have them in the chamber my god yeah I know it's a lot I I just loved I love it it's the best job in the world yeah you're passionate that's what's important you do what you love yeah okay so I gotta ask you this what is your most memorable dirty talk line that you have that you have written I have one that I wrote down 
from Wrecking the Halls. So I could I could uh, ask you about that one, or you can tell me one that you love. Okay, well, I'll tell you the line from one of my books that's that was the it was the line that broke my mother like she she told me she would never read another one of my books again I okay just, my daughter isn't outside my office door listening to this but uh, <laughs> so it's from a book called risking it all and he says um i don't fuck around with virgins but i'll get on my knees and eat that untouched pussy like a motherfucker <laughs> oh, and God. yeah and my mom read that and she was like <laughs> My flesh wants to continue, but my heart won't let me, she said. I was like, oh God, gross. Um, but yeah, that's the line of my mother. And that's probably my favorite, probably that I'm most proud of. I think that's my favorite now too. Mm, I don't know if it even oh, compares to the halls. The one from Wrecking the Halls for me was, God damn, Peach, are you on the pill? Just in case pulling out of that pussy is going to be torture. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like me. Yeah, I was like, and I mean, there's a ton in there, but I was like, oh, that was like in the very beginning. And I was like, okay, I see you beat. I see where you're going with this. Yeah. And there's going to be, like, but okay. But Melody has a little diner. So I was like. I know that was so exciting to see. Like she didn't yeah. know, but she was like, what if I like it? Maybe I should just try it. You know, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. she started, it's like she found her voice. Like she found her like courage um, to like deny him. Yeah. But also, not just that, but also to teach him that it's okay. It doesn't have to be this shameful thing of like, you know, you don't have to do it for the wrong reasons. You don't have to deny yourself pleasure for the, these bad reasons. You can just enjoy it, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so like, he comes to her and he's like the most experienced one, but then she like ends up being the one that like, I don't know, she yes. did all right. Like she, she was the secret missing ingredient for him. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. I have a swoony line from that book too, because it's not all the spice, it's the love and the romance too. Yeah. Um, and so this one I wanted to share. Okay. Um, they were the greatest song ever written. And he planned on singing their love song for the rest of his life. Oh. <laughs> All the feels. <laughs> but uh, what song would that be? If they could you think of a title? Like if he wrote a song for Melody, what do you think he would call it? I don't know why. Like I, it's the the song always comes to me at the end, like during the epilogue, during like the end of a book, and it's it heavily features in Hook, Line, and Sinker, but Let's Stay Together by Al Green, I feel like is the song I always mm. want to leave. I want to leave my couples with that. Like, it's like you're on a, you're just dancing in the kitchen. Like you're just floating yeah. and there's nothing wrong and you're always going to be together no matter what happens. And it's just like, it's just such a beautiful, happy song. Um, but that yeah. is always the one that I like. I want to hear. I want to hear it in my head when I'm, if I don't, if I don't hear it in my head during the epilogue, I know I've taken a wrong turn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a great measure of like, if you hit the mark the way that you want it to. I love that. All right. Well, we're um, basically out of time. Can you let us know what you got next coming up? Uh, what are your secret tantalizing projects or ventures <laughs> or where can we see you? All that good stuff. So I, right now, Wreck the Halls is out. It's a Christmas, uh, it's a Christmas rom-com with like a lot of fun and spice. Then in February, I'm kicking off a sports series. It's going to be called the Big Shots series. <laughs> um, I don't know why that, that was so funny. And um, mm -hmm, Avon mm -hmm. it. But it starts <laughs> off with, uh, it starts off with Fangirl Down, which is this grumpy, like, ready to retire, like down on his luck. Everyone hates him, golfer, professional golfer. And then the sunshine caddy who like won't give up on him and like refuses to let him give up. And uh, like I said, it ended up being one of my favorite books I've ever written. And so I'm really excited. And then of course, then we go, we, we're going to hit hockey. We're going to hit hockey and we're going to hit it hard. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah. Hit hard. I like those words. Very hard. Yeah, I just revealed the cover yesterday for the au pair, the au pair affair, which is the follow up to Fangirl Down. Okay, those are my two books for next year. That's it. Excellent. 
Well, it's been such a pleasure. We hope that you come back because I have so many questions <laughs> that I didn't ask you, but um, we'll get it to them next time. Yeah. That's a plan. All Thank right. you so much for having me. This is amazing. This was so fun. Thank you, Tessa. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye, guys. And that wraps up another episode of Cocktails and Cliture, where things got steamy and conversations got spicy. If you enjoyed our wild book reviews, author interviews, and irresistible cocktails and wines we sipped on, make sure to subscribe, download, and rate our podcast wherever you listen. Stay connected with us on Instagram and Facebook at Cocktails and Cliture for all the latest updates, behind the scenes fun, and more. And if you'd like to support the show, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. Your support helps us keep the naughty conversation flowing. Thanks for joining us on this thrilling journey. And hey, if the world asks you why you're blushing, tell them you're listening to Cocktails and Cliture, the podcast that brings the heat one smutty chapter at a time. <laughs>